Fear. Future events that aren't real. You're basically imaging something that isn't real, but yet you're feeling these negative emotions. You're going through these spiral notebooks of your life, and you realize, this is how I learned. This is unbelievable. And you realize through hard work, you can outwork anybody. One can have no smaller or greater mastery than mastery over oneself. And if that's the game that we're playing, if I can construct my belief system, if I can choose at any moment to believe something that's more empowering than I was believing the moment before, and that that will actually find its way into my actions. Number one, you suffer because you don't know who you are. You confuse yourself with your body-mind experience. Number two, you grasp and cling at experiences which are evanescent and transitory and dreamlike. You say, what happened to your childhood? It's over. What happened to yesterday? It's over. What happened to five minutes ago? It's over. What happens to these words? By the time you hear them, they don't exist. We are asleep. Our life is a dream, but once in a while we wake up enough to know that we are dreaming. So what do you wake up to? That's why it's really important not to think in the past, to live in the past, to beat yourself up over the past. You know, I, I try to completely forget the past, live in the present, but look forward to the future. I think when somebody has a setback that, number one, you, you have to become awake again because a setback can just really put you in a daze. You know, what takes place so, so many times is that people are, they stay in their days and they, they're not awake. So you have to become awake and number two, you have to become aware. So you're awake, but now be aware, like what's going on around me? You gotta start diving into those things that you're afraid of. You don't gain confidence by going to a spot that makes you feel good. It's gonna be a false reality. And the second life gives you that challenge or what gave you confidence is that happy spot. It gives you confidence not being afraid. It's overcoming the fear. Well, I do believe that our outer self, our body, is a manifestation of our inner belief systems. The inner image that you have of yourself is pretty much what you see on the outside. To me, the very fundamental purpose of life is to find out how many skills I can acquire that have utility and then put that utility to the test in service of something greater than myself. Nobody will act for the many, but people will act for the one. We, we've all made decisions, maybe, that weren't the best, but the only decision you can make at that time, you just gotta let go of it. You gotta completely let go. So that when you do come to your end, and you meet your maker, if you, if you believe in something high, that you just absolutely can have no regret whatsoever. Things were the way they were, and you just accept yourself for exactly who and what you were. This is the biggest question that humans or everybody should be asking. Who am I? What am I? Am I the changing experience of this body, which is a perceptual activity? Am I the experience of the changing mind? What is it at the basis of this? When you start that reflective self-inquiry, ask yourself, who am I? What do I want? What is my purpose? What am I grateful for? My cookie jar has every single failure and success of my life. Something I overcame. So what happens in, this, in, in time of life when you're stressed out and things get bad, even the hardest guy in the world, I will, in my mind, reach into my cookie jar, and sometimes you forget how hard you are in times of, of, of need. I calm down, take that one second, get control of my life, 
reach in the cookie jar, reset my mind. You have to remind yourself of how badass you really are. There's a proverb that says, he who works his land will have abundance. But if you chase fantasies, you lack wisdom. And people say, well, what's your land? Your land is what's in front of you. You got to plant the seed. You got to water the seed. And then you reap a harvest. You got to plow, 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 plow. And you got to plant the right seeds. See, every day you got, you got negative seeds and positive seeds. And, and people that are selfish, man, you're just planting negative seeds that are not going to come back positive. So when you plow and you plant the right seeds and you water them, which is repetition, it doesn't look like it's going to grow. And all of a sudden, man, payday is on its way. A lot of times I'll be in a tours at mile run or something like that, and I'm all jacked up. Body's broken, mind's broken, spirit's broken. I start to say, what if I can pull this off? This too shall pass. Whatever you're feeling, whether you're feeling great or whether you're feeling terribly, it's going to pass. But if truly you could never feel good about yourself ever again, why would you want to go on? Even serving other people, you do it in part because of how beautiful it feels. So helping people understand that that will pass, that there will be something beautiful again waiting for them. Whenever you look at somebody that's been successful, do not allow yourself to make them extraordinary at your expense. You're capable of whatever it is that they're capable of.